आइए पढ़े डॉक्टर अंबेडकर को और आज हम राउंड टेबल कॉन्फ्रेंस की कड़ी में उनका लास्ट स्पीच जो है डिमांड फॉर स्पेसिफिक एंड कंक्रीट प्रोविजंस फॉर सेफ गार्ड ऑफ डिप्रेस क्लासेस इन फ्यूचर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन पांच पढ़ने जा रहे हैं ये प्लीनरी सेशन ऑन जनरल रिव्यू इन एट सिटिंग ऑन नाइनटीन जनवरी नाइनटीन और इसमें मैं वही पढ़ रही हूँ जो अंबेडकर ने लिखा है और मेरा सिंपल एक छोटा सा प्रयास है कि अगर आप बाबा साहब को नहीं पढ़ पा रहे हैं तो मेरे माध्यम से आप उन्हें सुन लीजिए और इसके लिए मैं आपको जो मेरा चैनल है रीडिंग अंबेडकर उसको सब्सक्राइब करने के लिए ज़रूर बोलूँगी अगर आप सुन रहे हैं आप तक वीडियो आ रही है तो चैनल को सब्सक्राइब ज़रूर करें आपका सब्सक्रिप्शन और अच्छे कमेंट्स मेरा मनोबल बढ़ाते हैं तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं रीडिंग अंबेडकर और बाबा साहब आइए पढ़ते हैं बाबा साहब को आइए पढ़ते हैं अंबेडकर को डिमांड फॉर स्पेसिफिक एंड कॉन्क्रीट प्रोविजन फॉर सेफ गार्ड ऑफ डिप्रेस क्लासेस इन फ्यूचर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्लीनरी सेशन ऑन जनरल रिव्यू इन एट सिटिंग ऑन नाइनटीन जनवरी नाइनटीन ये कोर्ट है कोर्ट का मतलब है कि ये बाबा साहब ने खुद बोला था और ये उन्हीं का लिखा हुआ है उन्हीं का बोला हुआ है तो मैं पढ़ती मिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर द राउंड टेबल कॉन्फ्रेंस हैज हैड टू ग्रैप ग्रैपल विद टू मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच मस्ट अराइज इन एनी अटेम्प टू ऑर्गेनाइज द पोलिटिकल लाइफ ऑफ अ कम्युनिटी द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल गवर्नमेंट वॉज वन ऑफ दैम एंड द अदर वॉज दैट ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव गवर्नमेंट On the question of responsible government in the provisions I have very little to say I accept the report of the committee and the subject to my dissent I stand by it but regarding the question of responsible government in the center I am afraid I take a different view it would be dishonest to say that the report of the federal structure subcommittee does not contemplate change in the bureaucratic form of government as we know it today but it would be equally dishonest for me to conceal uh, from you my opinion that this change is sh- shadowy and not substantial and responsibility is bogus and n- not real the lord chancellor told us that he had shown the seed and it was for us to tend the plant sir we are indeed very grateful to the lord chancellor of the great part he had he has played in this momentous conference grateful as i am to him as i am not signature uh, sanguine that the pl- plant he promised will grow i fear the grain he had chosen for his seed is st- 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 is sterile and the soil in which he had he has cast is not congenial to its growth i had submitted to the lord chancellor and statement containing my views on the future constitution of federal india i do not know whether or not the committee on which he presided considered it for i do not find any reference to it in the report of the committee on which he presides i adhere to the view i expressed therein and i cannot give my approval to the constitution which so largely de- departs from those views indeed if i were given a choice between the existing system and the cross bred by the committee i would prefer the existing one but sir if the constitution of the central government contained in the report of the committee satisfied sir t b sapru who has been the friend guide and philosopher of this conference if it is agreeable to mr J- jaykar who proclaimed himself the representative of youth of india and if it please sir ap pat ap patro who speaks as he says in the name of the n- non brahmin of india if it is not to me uh, if it is not for me to oppose my attitude therefore is that of one who does not approve but who also does not ap- obstruct i will leave it to those who bless it to carry it through this attitude is all the more agreeable to me because i have no mandate uh, from those whom i represent regarding the form of government but i have a mandate and that is while not opposing responsible government to see that no responsible government was established unless it was the same time accompanied by a 
truly representative government it is when i took look at the achievements of the conference to find out how it has dealt with the question of representative government that i feel most disappointed the franchisee and the representation of the different class in the legislature are the two pillars on which truly representative government can rest everybody knows that the nehru committee had adopted adult suffrage and that the part of the constitution framed by it has the support of all political parties in india when i come to this conference i had thought that so far as the question of franchise was concerned the battle had already been won but in the franchise community community committee i was completely disillusioned i found to my great surprise that all those who had signed the nehru report had done so much mental reservation so much so that it was difficult to persuade even the indian liberal to consent to an and franchise 25% of the population of provincial legislatures the franchise for the central legislature is no doubt an unknown quantity but i have no hope that it will be such as to make the central legislature more representative of the people than the provincial legislatures are going to be a franchise so limited must necessarily make the future government of india a government of masses by the classes regarding the question of distribution of seats among the majority and various minority commute communities we all know that there is deadlock the deadlock is largely due in my opinion to the mischief done in the past i'm sure that if the authorities in india had acted in the past on the principle of justice to all and favors of none problems would not have become so difficult solution the british government set different values on different committees according to the political use they made for them and gave to the committees an extraordinary share of political power by denying it to the depressed classes in a measure which was their rightful due in this matter the most aggrieved community is the press classes and i was hoping that this conference would proceed on the principle that was wrong settled never settled and gave to the and give to the depressed classes their rightful quota of seats by revolution of the old values but this has not been happen the claim of the mother, other minorities has already been acknowledged and defined all that they stand in need of the alteration and amendments to bring them in com- conformity with a large structure and increased scope of new government whatever be the al- alterations and amendments no one will dare to furrow or out the foundation that has already been laid down the case of the depressed classes is totally different they claim their claim have been just heard just heard they have not been ad- at judged and i know no no i i do not know how many of them will be admitted to my mind it is not improbable that having regard to the hopelessness of their position the claim of the depressed classes to representation may be with vital down to satisfy the ever increasing scramble by the communities who are maneuvering not so much for production as for as for power in view of this i am bound to make my attitude perfectly plain at the right of the depressed classes in the future constitution are not defined any announcement that might be made on behalf of my high his majesty government regarding the introduction of responsibilities of in the center as well as in the provinces should they make it clear that any advance in that direction must be on condition and subject to the agreement between the commu- communities which would provide effective safeguards for the rights and interest of the depressed classes i must emphasize the gravity of the situation and bring to your notice that no announcement will be acceptable to us unless the position is made perfectly clear in this behalf and that failing this is i and my colleagues will be unable to accept the responsibility of participating in the future work of conference and will be compelled to disassociate ourselves from it sir in asking to you in asking you to do so i'm asking you to do more than give effect to our your pl- pledged word the british parliament and those who speak for it have always stated that they are trustees for the depressed classes and i'm sure that what they have been seeing is no one of the conventional lies of civilizations which are 
all led to utter keep human relations as pleasant as possible in my opinion it is therefore the bounded duty of the government to see that trust is not betrayed and let me tell you mr prime minister that depressed classes would regard it as the greatest betrayal on the part of this majesty's government uh, if it were to leave us to the mercy of those who have taken no interest in our welfare and whose pride prosperity and greatness is founded on our ruination and degradation for saying so i will be called a communalist by the nationalist and patriot patriots of india i am not afraid of that india is a peculiar country and her nationalist and patriots are peculiar people a patriot and a nationalist in india is one who sees with open eyes and his fellow men treated as being less than man but his humanity does not rise in protest he knows that man and woman for no cause are denied their human rights but it does not prick his civic sense to help action he finds whole class of the people shut out from public employment but it does not rouse his sense of justice and fair play hundreds of civil practices that injured man injure man in society are perceived by him but they do not sicken him with disgust the patriots one cries power and more power for him for his class i'm glad i do not belong to that class of patriots i belong to the class which takes its stand on democracy on which it seeks to destroy monopoly in every shape and form our aim is to realize and practice our ideals of one man one value in all walks of life political economical and social it is because representative government is one means to that and the depressed classes attached to it it's great as and it because of its value to us as i have urged upon you necessary for making our declaration subject to its fulfillment you may tell me that the depressed class says have your sympathy my reply is for second people what is wanted is something more concrete something more defined you may despise me for being unduly re- apprehensive my reply is that better to be despised for two anxious apprehensions rather than be ruined by too confident a security now the next one is sixth because this whole debate and discussion and the speech is being divided into parts so i'm reading the sixth part again sign a die adjournment of minority committee nine sitting on 8th october 1931 Please remember the, the, these dates, 8th October 1931, against Sinai adjustment of the minority committee, 9th sitting. Now I start with the quote and which is of speech of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, our loving Baba Sahib. Mr. Prime Minister, last night when we parted at the conclusion of the meeting of the informal committee, we parted although we sensed be with a sense of failure at least with one com- common understanding and that was that when we meet here today none of us should make any speech or any comment that would cause exasperation i'm sorry to see that mr gandhi should have been guilty of a breach of his understanding excuse me i must have the opportunity to speak he started by giving what were and according to him the causes of failure of the informal committee now i have my own causes which i think were responsible for the failure of the informal committee to reach an argu- agreement but i do not propose to discuss them now what disturbed me after hearing mr gandhi is that instead of confining himself to his proposition namely that the minorities committee should adjourn sign and die he started casting certain reflections upon the representatives of the different committees who are sitting round this ta- table he said that the de- delegates were nominees of the government and that they did not represent the views of the respective communities for whom they stood we cannot deny the allegation that we are nominees of the government but speaking for myself i have not the slightest doubt that even if the depressed class such of india were given to the chance of electing their representative to this conference i would all the same find a place here i say therefore that whatever i am a nominee or not i fully represent the claim of my community let no man be under any mistaken impression as regarded that mr 
The Mahatma has been always claiming that the Congress stand for the depressed classes and the Congress represents the depressed classes more than I or my colleagues can do. To that claim, I can only say that it is one, it is one of many false claims which responsible people keep on making. Although the person concerned with regard of those claims have been invariably denying them. The Mahatma The Mahatma has been always claiming that Congress stands for the depressed classes and that the Congress represents the depressed classes more than I or my colleague can do. To that claim, I can say that it is one of the many false claims which responsible people keep on making, although the persons concerned with regard to those claims have been invariably denied them. I have here a telegram which I have just received from a place which I have never visited and from a man whom I have never seen. From the President of Depressed Classes Union, Kumaun Almora, which I believe is uh, in the un United Province and which said in the following resolutions. And the quote is, this meeting declares is no confidence in the Congress movement which has been carried on in and outside the country and condemns the method adopted by the Congress worker. I do not care to read further, but I can say that this, and I think if Mr. Gandhi is, will examine his position, uh, he will find out the truth that although there may be people in the Congress who may be showing sympathy towards the depressed classes, the depressed classes are not in the Congress. That is a proposition which I propose to substantiate. I do not wish to enter into these points of controversy. They seem to me to be somewhat outside the main, main proposition. The main proposition which Mr. Mr. Gandhi has made is that this committee should be a gen cyanide. With regard to that proposition, I entirely agree with the attitude taken uh, by Sir Muhammad Saifi. I, for one, cannot consent to this proposition. It seems to me that there are only two alternatives, either that miss this minority committee should go on tackling the problems and trying to arrive at this some satisfactory solution. If that is possible, and then if that is not possible, the British government should undertake the, the solution of that problem. We cannot, cannot consent to leave this to the arbitration of third parties whose sense of responsibility may not be the same as must be the sense of responsibility of the British government. Prime Minister, permit me to make one thing clear. The depressed classes are not anxious. They are not calmerous. They have so not started any movement for claiming that there shall be an immediate transfer of power from the British to the Indian people. They have their particular grievances against the British people and I think I have voiced them sufficiently to make it clear that we feel those grievances most genuinely. But to be true to facts, the position is that the depressed classes are not calm, calmering for the transfer of political power. This position, to put it plainly, is that we are not anxious for the transfer of power. But if the British government is unable to re resist the forces that have been set up in the country which do come out for transference of political power and we know for depressed classes in their present circumstances are not in a position to resist that then our submission is that if you make that transfer that transfer will be accompanied by such constitution and by such provinces that the power shall not fall into the hands of uh, hands of a click into the hands of an oligarchy or into the hands of a group of people, whether Mohammedans or Hindus, but that the solution shall be uh, such that the power shall be shared by all communities in their respective proportions. Taking that view, I do not see how I, for one, can take any serious parts in the deliberations of the Federal Structure Committee unless I know where I and my community stand. Thank you. Please do not forget to subscribe the channel Reading Ambedkar and I'm really personally thankful to you for sharing so much love and uh, nice comments and encouraging me. Thank you.